just do it for him. Oh, mercy, you got to do better than that on count of three. One, two, three. All right, that's a lot better. Amen. I believe God can still send revival in these last days. Amen. I believe he's coming soon, and we better get ready. Because uh, as Bill Snow says, ready or not, he's coming back. Amen. So you better be ready because he's on his way. The Bible says in Psalms 135 verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him. O ye servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto him, for it is what? Pleasant. Amen? So that's what we're going to do this morning. All right, let's stand to your feet. Oh, this is pitiful. What's all that popping and tearing on I'm hearing? Sound like somebody popping popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. All right, now look, you got to smile. If you have a hard time smiling, look at Lurch over here. He'll make you smile, okay? Now, pick up that thing most people don't know what they are anymore. It's called a song book. Can you pick it up? It's not too heavy. It won't hurt you, I promise you. Turn to page number 31. We're going to sing all three verses, am I right? Yes, sir. All verses of page number 31, and he, he lives. Aren't you glad he's alive today? I serve a risen Savior. He's my Lord and Savior, and that's why we're here to shout and praise about what he's done for us. Page number 31, he lives. Let's sing all three verses.
because you're alive. We serve a risen Savior who's come out of the grave. And Lord, if he can conquer death, that's the biggest problem we have. All the rest are going to be simple. We just have to wait on you and trust you. All things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Lord, bless the choirs that continue to sing this morning, the congregations that sing, Sister Diane, as she sings. Father, help us, Lord, leave here today more excited than we came. Bless Brother Bobby as he preaches to us this morning. Lord, just give him the very words you'd have him to say to draw us closer to you. And we'll thank you ahead of time for all you're going to do. Lord, most of all, if there be one man, one person, one lady yes. that's lost this morning, yes. may today be the day they find Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Yes. Nothing greater can happen this hour. And we pray that it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Maybe the city choir is going to come sing for us.
Free three point That's right. Do it. What did oh you get? God. Come on. What did like, you do? Do I have to? Yeah, you got to do it. Do, do it. I have to make this? Do I have to make Just do what you got to do. But the no, don't sing. Just do what you did. I can't get back up. Don't sing. Just do what you did. There you go. see some funny things when you sit on the pulpit. Y'all don't get to see them. But I want y'all to see that. He, he thought he was alone with God back there, but the preacher saw him say amen. <laughs> Ain't God good. The song said, when he sto rolled the stone away, I knew we were going to have revival this morning when she come on down the hall rolling the stone away. <laughs> she had the stone rolling down the hall, so y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Get here early and you'll see some stuff. You'll see some stuff. All right, Brother Bill's sick today. Y'all pray for Brother Bill. Let's pray he'll get out of the hospital real soon. And so pray for him. Here are the, today's birthdays. Sunday, October the 31st, Barbara Saunders. Monday, November the 1st, Daytona Haymore. Wednesday, November the 3rd, and you got to stand for him. He's not here, so you stand for him. You know who you are. Tony Woodson. Thank you. You did a good job. I'll even let you be seated on that. Amen. <laughs> All right. Jamie, get up here and lead him in a happy birthday. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Any anniversaries, by the way? Hold it. We got a wedding couple. Y'all stand up back there. Got married yesterday. Oh. Got a, isn't that? Got married yesterday at church. <laughs> Says in Psalms 146, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord, 
Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. All God's people said, Amen. that's why we're here. We're here to rejoice and lift up God. He's done so much for us. Think of where you'd be today if Jesus hadn't saved you. I'd probably be six feet under. But thank God he saved my soul and changed my life. If you're here today and you've never been saved, today could be the day for you. Say amen. amen. Let's pray that it is. Father, take this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. Lord, we thank you for living in a country that we're able to give and to do far above Lord, what the rest of the world can do through our freedoms. Lord, bless this offering and bless our service now. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> unto his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah, and rejoice before him. I'm glad I got something to shout about. Amen? Amen. Something to thank God for. Sister Diane's going to sing for us.
side this morning. Boy, I'm on the Father's side. I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. Amen. And uh, I'm glad. That's an old song. That's from the early 90s. The Reinhardts put that out in the early 90s. You say, who in the world is the Reinhardts? They somebody sang gospel music a long time ago. But they had some good songs. I'm, I love, I had the face for radio. And I was on the radio, still on the radio. Don't sing, but I preach. But I remember me and old Scott Dean going down to the radio station just down below Bob Bobby's church. We probably blew him out to church two or three times down there and uh, playing all those old, good old gospel songs. Isn't it good to know that you're headed for heaven? Amen. That the Savior saved you, gave his life for you. That's what we're here to remind you about this week. It's good to have Brother Bobby Lee. Bobby, come on up to the platform. Brother Bobby was on my ordination council. I'm, I'm amazed he still speaks to me. <laughs> and uh, boy, that's been 36 years ago now. Lord have mercy. And uh, but Bobby's been a faithful preacher of the Word of God for many years. And I've always heard behind a good preacher is a better wife. No doubt. Say amen, Sister Joanne. Amen. Amen. It's good to have her with us today as well. And he's right now working with the Mount Pisgah Printing Ministry, and I'm here to tell you this morning that our church voted a few days ago to buy you a roll of paper. Amen. Then my Sunday school class voted to buy you a roll of paper, so we got two rolls. Let's give Brother Bobby Amen. a hand. Amen. Great. Great. Ah, thank you, Fisher. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that's five, uh, let's see, that's a thousand Bibles. One thousand Bibles that will go around this world to folks who've never had a Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you, Pastor. And I uh, usually, you know, preach on that and so forth, but this is revival, and I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, everything I say today, I say to myself. Everything I say tonight, I say to myself. And I'm going to, pre I'm going to be preaching to myself, and if you want to listen in, you listen in. And uh, because I need revival like everybody else. And it's such a great joy to be here. We, Joanne and I, we have a great friend, Brother Ferrell Burner. And uh, Ferrell has been a great blessing to us. And his wife went to heaven about, I don't know, three years ago. And uh, he came down this morning to um, hear me preach. And uh, I'm glad. And uh, thank you, Ferrell, for coming this morning. God bless you. And uh, preacher, thank you for allowing me to come. And I'm so excited about it this morning. Listen, I'm so excited just to be saved. I'm so excited to be able to preach. I'm so excited I'm still alive. <laughs> Amen? Aren't you excited you're still alive? And uh, you, you say, why is all that, preacher? Why are you so excited? Well, you see, I should have never been saved. You know, folks had given up on me a long time ago. And uh, I didn't get saved until I was 27. And they said, he'll never be saved. Never in a million years. And God fooled them all. And uh, what's the secret, preacher? I, you know, I, I, I'm like old Gypsy Smith. And somebody asked Gypsy one day, said, I heard you preach Gypsy, and I told this story before, but you forgot it, so I'll tell it again. And uh, somebody heard Gypsy Smith uh, preach when he was just a, a young preacher man, young evangelist. He was so excited about God, so excited about being saved, so excited about heaven, and all of those things, and then somebody went to, he heard him preach when he was an older man. And he went up to him after the service and said, Gypsy, I heard you preach when you was a young preacher. I heard you tonight. He said, man, you still love God, you still have the fire, you still got it all. What's the secret? Gypsy Smith looked at him and said, I never lost the wonder of it all. I never lost the wonder of it all, preacher. Never will, amen. I never lost the wonder of it all. A God in heaven would save me? Oh, my. Wonder, wonder of wonders, miracle of miracles, amen. You know, and you know what? God's still in the same business. When you think somebody's gone too far and can't be, can't be saved, that's when God steps in, amen. And uh, I want you to be back tonight. And, uh, it, you know, it really doesn't excite me to, to uh, preach to vacant pews. <laughs> and... Uh, but when I preach to folks sitting in them, that excites me. And uh, so be sure and be back tonight. Hey, listen, just set aside. I'm, you know, I need something from God this week. And by the grace of God, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to be faithful. 
And so let me encourage you to be back. And well, today's Sunday. Isaiah chapter 1, if you're turning your Bibles there. Isaiah chapter 1. Today is Sunday. World Series, I think. Don't they play the World Series again today? World Series is today. They have a car race in Martinsville. Washington Redskins will be on TV today. And the world goes on. Some young, some young lady somewhere, someplace, some city in the United States will walk into a Planned Parenthood and have an abortion. And the world turns on. And that was a man by the name of Moses. He stood in the gap for his people. That's what we need to do. I don't know about you, but listen, we live in a land. Hey, listen, Isaiah was living in the type of land that you and I live in today. We need somebody to make up the hedge and stand in the gap. We need somebody someplace to say, by the grace of God, I'm not going to be defeated. By the grace of God, I'm going to keep on keeping on. By the grace of God, I'm not going to stop. And if it's happened in my life, I'm coming back. And I'm going to let God speak to my life this week. The prophet Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets in, in the Old Testament, one of the greatest prophets who ever lived in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, began to describe not only the world situation, but his people, God's people situation. And boy, were they in a mess. I mean, they were in a mess. And so like you and I today living in this country, oh, we're in a mess. And uh, But I'm glad God's still in control. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. And uh, I told uh, Robinson the other day, I had a funeral in Appomattox, and uh, I told Kinkle, he owns the uh, Robinson funeral home there in Appomattox, and I don't know how many funerals I had there, and, and, and uh, so forth. And I said, um, you know, Kinkle, I said, I'm not looking for you, buddy. And I said, but, you know, if you happen to get me, I told him I want a discount. <laughs> and he said, uh, preacher, don't you worry about that. I'll give your wife a discount. He laughed and went on. I reckon he is. I'm holding him to it when he gets to heaven. <laughs> you know, but the prophet Isaiah, oh my. And I know with a broken heart, a broken heart, he began to describe the condition of the land. He began to describe the condition of God's people. Uh, you know, God's people are the greatest people, I think, in all the world. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I, man, I love God's people. Joanne and I, we, we love PKs. And we love PWs. And you say, who's that preacher? Well, PWs are preacher's wives and PKs are preacher's kids. And uh, we love them in a special way. But the prophet Isaiah, no doubt, with a broken heart, loving his people, and God gave him the words to describe the church and uh the nation of Israel back in those days and God's people and, and uh, the condition that he said in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, look at verse 2, he said, uh, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. He said, For the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Oh, you think that's bad? That's nothing. And we continue reading here. Oh, listen. And then he got down in verse 4, he said, Oh, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. That have forsaken the Lord. Have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. He came down to verse 6 and, and he said, From the sole of the foot even unto the head, 
there is no soundness in it but wounds and, bu and bruises and putrefying uh, sores that have not been closed, neither bound up, neither um, uh, uh, la, 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 mollified with ointment. My eyes are going bad along with my brain. And uh, it's called age. Now I heard several people say amen. And then in verse 7, he said, Your country is desolate. What was the answer? What would God do then? And there are some other things that he said, but I'll skip them. It's enough to describe the nation and the people back in those days. And then one of the greatest awesome things that has ever happened in the history of mankind happened. God Almighty gave him an invitation. After, being, after, after describing all of this, God says in Isaiah chapter 1 and over in verse 18, look at it because I want you to see it. Notice what he says. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. My, after he described all of that and, and uh, you and I, boy, we would get all upset. We'd condemn them and, and everything else. And, and God, who's the ruler of the earth, has all power, steps up there and says, hey, come here. Let me talk to you. And when I'm talking to you, I want to reason with you. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. And remember how he described them. And you know what God Almighty is doing to me and you today? Same thing that God is doing to the United States of America and to this world. He's telling us, come here, come, come here, come here, let me talk to you. You've lost your way a little bit. Come here, come here. And let's talk about this thing. Let's reason a little bit about it. He gives the invitation to the sinner. And says, though your sins be as scarlet. Oh, he said, they can be white as snow. Remember when you got saved? And that great big old pile of sin was on your shoulders. That you were going to spend eternity in hell trying to pay for them, but you could never pay for them. Because there's only one thing that can pay for sin. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember that? And God began to tug at your heart. And he said, come here. Let's reason. Let's reason for a minute. You're not going to live forever. So you're going to die one day, so let's reason. Let's talk about this thing a little bit. And then what's going to happen when you die? What's going to take place then? Where are you going? You're, there's only one of two places. When a man or a woman leaves this world, that's heaven or hell. There, there, there is no in-between. There is no purgatory. For the child of God, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Come in, let me reason about your sin. Give them to me. That's what Jesus said today. Give me your sin. Trade heaven for hell. Trade, tra trade a life of turmoil and uncertainty and all those things for a life of peace and a life of joy and a life of hope. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Get your sins forgiven. I remember when I got saved. Remember, this is an invitation God's given to the sinner. And boy, my life was a mess. A mess. My heart, oh, a lot of folks thought I was successful and so forth, but down deep inside, my life was a mess. And God began to say, you know, son, you're not stupid. Come in, let's have a talk. Slow down. And come in, let's talk about this thing. You're not going to live forever, right? Yeah, God, you're right. I, 
I'm not going to live forever. Where are you going when you die? Oh, Lord, I know where I'm going. I'm not saved. God, so come and let's reason about this thing. Let's talk about it. Would you like to have your sins forgiven? Your yeah, Lord, I would, but I don't know how. A man told me that if my good outweighed my bad when I got to heaven, then I'd make it in. And God, there's no way that my good would ever outweigh my bad. I reckon I'm lost forever. Because my good could never outweigh my bad. That's not the way it is, son. God began to deal in my heart and life. One night a man took the Bible, opened up the Bible and said, Bob, you're a sinner. <laughs> yeah, I sort of chuckled. Never had a problem with that. Some folks never can see this sin. I don't understand that. Don't understand it. I said, oh, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to show you right here where Jesus will forgive you and take you to heaven when you die. <gasps> Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And that is the invitation that God Almighty today gives to the sinner. And the invitation is to just come. Come to Jesus. You're talking about revival. They'll put revival in your heart. I remember when I got word that, uh, well, uh, my mama got saved, and, and uh, when I preached one night, and, and uh, preacher called me when I was down at Tennessee Temple and told me, told me that it had gone before that night and led my daddy to the Lord. Man, you're talking about revival, man. I had revival. It's just a thing of getting back to looking who we are. Just a sinner saved by grace. You know, the only goodness in me is God. Oh, there was no good in me, as the writer has said, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. There's no soundness in it, wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. And then God one day gave me an invitation an invitation to be saved. Now, you know, I, you know, I talked about, you know, peace and joy about being saved. One of the great things about being saved is the peace that God gives us. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Jesus said, my peace. Oh, well, it's the peace of our Lord. Amen. It's wonderful to be able to crawl in the bed at night, you know, the winter time, and, and uh, pull up that old quilt that your grandma made years ago and pull that thing up around your nose and put your head on the pillow and just say, Dear Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. What great peace. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are looking for the world. Listen to me. You're looking for the world for it. You'll never find it. All you'll find is right here wounds and bruises and putrefying sores with no ointment. The only ointment we have is Jesus. And by the way, it's all we need. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer got saved. Next thing you know, when he set meat before those that Paul and Silas and, and uh, so forth, the Bible says that he set meat before them and rejoiced. Don't lose the wonder of it all. The wonder of being saved, don't lose the wonder of it all. It'll keep you rejoicing in the hard times of life. That's an invitation to the sinner. You know, there are four, five, six different invitations in the Bible, and I can't cover them all this morning. You wouldn't want me to cover them all this morning, and so I'm not going to cover them all this morning, but I want to cover just a couple more briefly, and, and, and I want to institute this. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, Jesus also gave an invitation. And I want to, I, you know, I know this is revival, but there's nothing any more in revival than knowing that God's going to take care of me in this life. And in the book of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Jesus gives an invitation to the weary. And those who are upset and those who have troubles, he said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Jesus said again, Oh, if you're weary this morning, if you're troubled, I don't care what it's about, it doesn't make any difference. Trouble about the world, trouble about your sin, trouble 
about your family, troubled about your neighbors, it doesn't make any difference. Troubled about your health, Jesus says, come to me. And I'll give you what you need. Notice what he said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Didn't leave anybody out. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, Jesus said, and I'll give you rest. Come. The invitation to the weary. You know, we live in a world of a lot of uncertainties. Joanne, she uh, was coming up the road this morning, and she said, uh, I never tell anybody what I'm going to preach. I, do you tell anybody what you're going to preach? preach? I don't either. I just, I don't know why. And, uh, but I just never do. I never tell her what I'm going to preach. And she has to, she has to ask me, and, and uh, sometimes I don't want to tell her. <laughs> Coming up the road this morning, she said, what are you going to preach on this morning? And um, before I could tell her, she told me, well, I need to preach on this morning. <laughs> And she began, I said, I already got a cup. She said, you know, you're going to have sitting out there before you people who are hurting because of what's going on in this world, who are troubled, who have a troubled heart, who have no peace. And they need to know that God's going to take care of them. And I said, I already got it covered. But see, that was... You said, why are you telling us that? Because that was her heart. This world gets you troubled. We have seven grandchildren trying to make a way in this world. Three children, their husband, trying to make a way in this world. You get weary trying to make ends meet. You're paying now a dollar more for gasoline. And that hurts everybody. That hurts the poorest of the poor. I'm a stickler when it comes to grocery shopping. My wife doesn't like it. And I, I, I like it because I save money. <laughs> now I compare the prices. And I noticed a little thing of, um, I was in Walmart the other day, and I've searched it all, Kroger and every other place, and I know where the cheapest stuff is. You say, well, you sound pretty tight to me. No, I like to use another word. It's frugal. <laughs> and I look, I've been paying $2.98 for stuff you wash clothes with. It's gone to 348. And you look at the paper and you say, couldn't I? We, I mean, I pay my taxes and, and here's our government. Our government's going to give $450,000 to an illegal immigrant to break the law. Now, I don't know about you. That, that bothers me. Because I work hard. I preach for what I get, and that's hard. <laughs> Jesus said, come, and come unto me, all ye that are weary and are heavy laden, and I'll give you my rest. It's an invitation to you this morning. I don't care where you are, what you're man, I don't care what you're going through. Man, I've been through it all. I, I, you know, it's just God has been so faithful and I know God will meet your needs. And some of you may have to pinch your pennies to make ends meet. I just know God will take care of you. That's all I know. You know, I go into churches now and thank you, preacher, again, church, so gracious. And this is what I do. I want to get God's Word into the hands of those who have never had a copy. 
for my livelihood, and it's part of my livelihood. I preach, and uh, you know what I get. I'm get. I mean, it's, it's what I live off of, and I and sometimes I, you know, Joanne and I, we were going down to uh, had a meeting in Tennessee, and going on to Florida a couple of years ago now, and uh, we were going down there, and I told, I said, I don't think our tires are going to make it. I don't think they're going to make it. I said, I'm just praying they'll make it to some way, some way we can get back home and and uh, take care of it. I, you know, I don't think you're going to make it. I was preaching the church in Tennessee. The preacher took us out to lunch, and we were sitting there talking, and he was sitting across from us, and, and uh, he looked at me, and he said, uh, he said, Brother Lee, he said, now, I don't, he said, I don't know when you're going to need another set of tires. He said, but the next set of tires that you need, we're going to pay for them. Now, you can say what you want, and you can say that's coincidence, you can say all that stuff and you can throw it all off as some kind of pie in the sky but I'm telling you it's three letters G-O-D. What is God doing? God is just taking care of the needs of his people. Come unto me, Jesus said, ye that are weary and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. There's an invitation to the Great Supper. I'm not going to cover. There's other invitations in the Bible, and I close with this one. And this is the one that I don't know about you, but I want to finish well in this life. Preacher talking about old people. Was that in Sunday school? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was. I really knew, see, I just wanted to see if he knew. And <laughs> but you know, old people have to be on guard like young people. And I want to end well. And I'll tell you what I want to do. In the last chapter of the Bible, God gives another invitation. Remember how the world in, in, in Isaiah chapter 1 and, and uh, then God gave the invitation to the sinner. He said, come unto me. I'll take care of your sin. You can't take care of it any other, any other way. And then there's the invitation to the weary and the heartbroken and those that have trials and, and uh, so forth. And then he gives another invitation. It's the last invitation in the Bible. I want you to listen to me. Because this is revival meeting. This is, now I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how thirsty you are for God. But I know that God gives an invitation to the thirsty. And in the book of Revelation chapter 22, in verse 8, 17, I'm just going to cover one verse here, and, and he said, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hears say, Come, and let him that is... Do you have your Bible open, anybody? Thirst. Let him that uh, thirst... What's the next verse? Uh, what's the next word? Come! Come, sinner! Come, weary one! Come, those that are thirsty... And oh, I'll place within your bosom a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And that well of water, you'll never go to a spiritual well again because you won't need it. It's a well unto everlasting life. The thirsty. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, as the heart, it's H-A-R-T, it's deer. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O oh God. I don't care how old you are, where you live, where the place may be. Oh, I was going to, you know, I was going to, I'm, I'm glad I changed my mind. I was going to sing the song this morning, Oh, to be like thee. Aren't you glad I changed my mind? <laughs> oh, to be like thee. Precious Redeemer, pure as thou art.
in this day and age because of everything you see on television. And where the world pictures everything so beautiful, so wonderful, sin and all its commodities, there are people who thirst for all kinds of things. But God's people ought to thirst for God. Amen. What can change my life? What can change my heart? Nothing like a thirst for God. And I want I want to finish well. Been saved now for 52 years. Got saved when I was 27. I used to couldn't add that high, but... I want to finish well. And I know, listen to the church, I know that the only way to finish well is to thirst for God. Now I'm going to give you this illustration in the Old Testament and I'm done. In the book of 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. <laughs> I had a preacher preach on yesterday who had, uh, had COVID and he said uh, had it March a year ago. Had to sit down still to preach. But he said I have lost some of my memory. And he said sometimes I'll be preaching. And he says, I, I forget where I was. And he didn't yesterday. But he said he does it at times. The COVID took away part of his memory. And he said, the doctor said that, you know, I, that, that I should get it back. <laughs> Hadn't got it back yet. I hadn't had COVID. So my excuse is old age. Elijah, Elisha, his prophets in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 6, if you want to turn there briefly and I'm done. They were going to build a new building. And hey, nothing wrong with building a new building if you need one, amen. amen. Nothing wrong with it. It means things are happening, things are going good, and, and that's what it was in the school of the prophets. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. So the young men got out there, and what did they do? Well, they had axes and so forth, and they began to cut down trees. I mean, if you're going to build a house, you'll build a place, you need some lumber. And so these guys got out here, the prophets, and, and uh, they began to cut down trees, and all of a sudden, uh, one of the axe heads broke, and it went in the water. Axe head's gone. That which he was working with, that which he had to have, was now lost. And he could stand up there and he could get three or four or five others and they could swing in unison. They could do whatever they wanted to, but there would be no more cutting down of a tree because they had lost the axe head. God's people sometimes loses that which God has given us for his glory and for our good, we lose it like the man lost the axe head. And the problem is just like him. I don't know whether he kept swinging or not, but you can swing much as you want to. But, 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 but if you lose the axe head of prayer, it's done. I mean, if you lose the axe head of, of uh, not being uh, unselfish, if you lose the axe head of, uh, of a thirst for God, you can take that old stick all you want to, and you can swing as many times as you want to, but nothing's going to happen. He lost his purpose. They, he had to have an axe head to cut down a tree, and you and I need prayer, and you and I need love and you and I need compassion, and you and I need unselfishness, and you and I need a thirst for God. And if we lose it, 
we can swing the old axe uh, uh, the old axe handle all we want to and it won't do a bit of good something else about that axe head it was borrowed and what's he going to have to do he's going to have to go back to the man and say where's my axe well uh, here's the handle but where's the axe head well, I lost it is borrowed. Listen to me. Everything we have is borrowed of God. Everything. The Bible says we are not our own. Did you get that? We are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Everything we have is God's. Listen, we everything is barred from God. Life, breath, have, everything is borrowed. Sometimes we lose the Christian traits because the axe head falls off. What do you need when that happens? You need a miracle. Did he get the axe head back? Sure did. How did he get it back? Did a man go down and, and uh, uh, go down in the water with a flashlight and so forth and find it? And no. He took a stick and threw it in the water and all of a sudden the axe head began to swim. You ever seen an axe head float? That not only floated, it swam. What's it going to take? For some of us to have a thirst for God, it's going to take a miracle. God provided you. God provided. God provided for me if I want it. Preacher, where did I lose it? Where did I lose my thirst for God? Where did I lose my desire for prayer? Where did, where did, I, where, where did I lose my desire for God's Word? Where did I lose it? You lost it at the place you quit doing it. You lost your prayer life when you quit praying. You lost your love for God and thirst for God when you quit thirsting for God and loving God. And we'll go all the way. And listen, we'll go in a million places looking for it. But you're not going to find it until you go to the place where you left it. Well, how did you get the axe head? I'm done. How did he get the axe head? Well, I like this. i got to read this. If I can find it. Verse 6, it says, The man of God said, Where did it fall? Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up. I want you to notice. And he put out his hand... And he took it. How do you get back your thirst for God? Your thirst for the Bible? Your thirst for prayer? How do you get all that back? How do you get it back? You take your hand, your spiritual hand. What do you do? You reach out and you take it. So simple. You just reach out and take it back. That's all. Oh, man. I wish I was more like Jesus. Don't you? You're the person I get upset more about than anybody else. 
Miss Me. Me. Because God has given me so much. And sometimes, sometimes I feel like I do so little. In every way, shape, and form. Are you thirsty for God? The invitation to the sinner. The invitation to the weary. The invitation to the thirsty. Jesus says, Come. And he took out his hand. And he reached and grabbed the axe head again. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know your life. I just know I needed this and I thank you for listening. I thank you for listening in. If you're here this morning, you're unsaved. God gives you an invitation and he reaches out those scarred hands that he purchased your redemption on Calvary and he says, come sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's nothing to do with good and sin is not. We're all like sheep have gone astray. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb. He, he offers that nail scarred hand and he says, sinner, come. Come to me. The weary this morning, broken hearted. I don't know how many is in here like that, but you came weary this morning. Don't know why, don't know the reasons or whatever, and I have, boy, I've gone places my heart was breaking. And I was so weary, the only thing I had to do is put one foot in front of the other one. Jesus says, Come to me, all ye that we are in the heaven laden, I'll give you rest. To the thirsty, he says, come on back and pick up the axe head. Get it back. Get it back. And that's what we need. I suppose most folks in this room this morning saved. If you're not saved, I'm giving just, just a moment an invitation to, like Jesus did, to come to him. And you can get saved this morning. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Maybe you got a broken heart. Jesus says, come to him. If you're thirsty, Jesus said, come on. I'll quench your thirst. I'll help you with that thirst. To thirst for the things of God. And not and quit thirsting so much for the things of this world. That one day it's all going to perish. All of it. We sell our spiritual hearts. We sell our spiritual souls. We sell our lives. For the corn husk. And the onions of Egypt. Instead of taking that which is most valuable. I was going to tell you about how we got the song Child of the King, but I'll do that tonight if you'll come back. Would you stand with me just for a moment? Preacher's going to come. You're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I do not know for sure if I died I'd go to heaven. Heads are bad, eyes are closed. I, I want to pray for you. That's all I want to pray for you. Now, do you have enough concern? Preacher, I do not know if I died this morning, I would go to heaven. But I want to know, and I do not want to die lost. If you're going to pray, would you pray for me? Heads are bowed all over the auditorium. God not looking. You say, Preacher, pray for me. Just slip up your hand take it right back down. Anybody like that this morning? I want to pray. God bless you. Anybody else? I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Just slip up your hand take it right back down. Preacher, pray for me. Anybody else? Well, I can sit. Anybody? This morning I'm going to give another invitation, but now I want to pray for this one that raised their hand. God in heaven, others could have raised their hands and probably should have. Thank you for the honesty of this one. 
I pray today that you give her the courage, him the courage, whatever the case may be, to accept Christ. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. There in the quietness of your heart, maybe you raised your hand and maybe you didn't. But you'll say, I want to be saved. There in the quietness of your heart, would you do this? Say, dear God, I'm a sinner. And right now, the best I know how, I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Right now. You prayed that prayer and you trusted Jesus, that's all you need. Amen? Amen? That's all you need. Maybe you're here this morning you say, Preacher, I've got a worry heart. I've got a worry soul. I'm bothered about some things. Jesus gives you an invitation to come to him. Would you just slip up your hand, take it right back down so I can pray for you? God bless you. Many hands. Heavenly Father, I pray for these this morning that have problems, heartaches, things. Sometimes we don't even know what we are so concerned about on the inside. We just know it's there. I pray for those this morning that were honest and say, Oh, I'm weary about some things. I've got, I've got some needs. Oh, God, help me. And I pray for them. Jesus, you said, Come unto me, ye that are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. And I know, Lord, if they'll come to you and ask you to help them, they'll do it. You'll do it, God. You'll give them what they need. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads about, eyes are closed. How many of you this morning would say, in the invitation to the thirsty, I'm thirsty for God, or I need to be thirsty for God. I need that. Pray for me, preacher. Heads about, eyes are closed. Slip up your hand. Let me sit. Take it right back down. I want to pray for you. Several hands. There should have been some other hands. And I'm not only going to pray for those who raised their hands, I'm going to pray for those that should have. Oh, I pray you'd get concerned about thirsting for God. Lord, I pray for those and I pray for myself because my hand went up. Oh, God, I want to thirst for you. I've become so concerned about other things at times and ask you to forgive me. God, put a thirst in my heart. Put a thirst in the heart of those that raise their hands. above anything else. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. To that person this morning that raised that hand, I need to be saved. If you accepted Christ, the preacher's going to be right here. I want you to leave your place. Walk down here and just tell the preacher, I got saved. Those of you that said, I've got a heavy burden, you need to come to the altar, you come. Especially those who said, I thirst for God. Oh, I don't have that thirst, but I want that thirst. And you see, you must do You must reach out that hand. You must, you must take that step. You leave your place this morning, come and find it here at an old-fashioned altar and ask God to help you and give you that thirst for Him. As we sing this morning, the invitation song is these guys, they'll sing it. You can keep your heads bowed. And uh, as the instruments play, you leave your place and come this morning. A thirst for God. Come on. Come on this morning. That's right. Come on. Or if you raise your hand about salvation, you come this morning. Oh, let God speak to your heart. Let somebody help you. Don't be ashamed and don't be afraid. Just come this morning. Preacher will meet you right here at the front. Just tell him. I got saved this morning. I trusted Jesus. And deep is its fountain, as wide as the sea. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. The millions have come. The millions have come. There's still room. 
take the Bible, ask, answer the questions for them, lead you to the cross. Millions have come. There's still room for one. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Whatever your need is, come right now. Iniquity, weary, thirsty. Dismiss us in prayer. Yeah,